What's up everybody? Happy Sunday. And today was Sunday Fun Day. Sunday Fun Day. Fun. Small mouth. Crush that stuff. It was a beat down. Just did one right there. Yep. It was a beat down on the small mouth today. We started out, okay. Everybody remembers, friend of the channel, Todd Shelter, Captain Todd Shelter. I finally got my buddy back. We fished all spring together, but then he goes and and he's up on Lake Ontario in his charter boat seven days a week, two trips a day, all season. And we'll start real quick. How did your lake season go this year for uh, salmon? For salmon, it was tough. Consistent, we caught fish each trip. No period for two or three weeks where you just went out and, and caught them at will. We usually have that stretch where for three weeks you can't go any, nothing wrong. Everything you do works. Uh, it never had that. But caught fish each trip. Uh, they showed up late. Brown trout fishing, thank goodness, was phenomenal before that. Some of the best brown trout fishing we've had in years. Yeah. Uh, and it, yeah. Lasted, it lasted right up to the end of August, which is when the salmon finally showed up in, in decent numbers. You know, it's funny, in, in the course of our careers, brown trout have really turned into the money fish. They kind of always have been for you us. You can get them from the spring yeah. all the way through. And you and I, when we were together every day in, in years past, we used to go fish browns late, late yeah. oh, when, yeah. when most everybody looked at us like we were cuckoo. Yeah, because you know? there were a couple salmon out there to catch. Right. So why would they brown trout fish if there's some salmon? Well, unless I can ensure the fact that each of the people on my boat, if there are four of them, can catch an adult king, I'd rather stay in where brown trout live and, and quite easily catch half a dozen to a dozen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. it makes more sense to me. From and and that is... That is a personal preference that a captain and a client Yeah, discuss. we always give them the choice. It's always you know, their choice. Um, and, and we like to think that, that more people are getting that choice and understanding, hey, I want to go try for this, or hey, I want to catch fish, and everything's different. But yeah. but you, you, for those people that don't know, on Lake Ontario, your seasonality is usually by about somewhere between 4th of July and that second or third week of July, it's full-blown king season. Mm -hmm. and, and you're chasing, the butterflies show up, yeah, and you're right. chasing salmon, yeah. you know? And in the last couple of years, it's been later and later and later before that big mass Seems of to salmon be. come to the east end. And and I know this year it was an on and off struggle when the guys in Oswego had them early in, in the summer and, and then into August, then all of a sudden they were gone too. Disappeared, never came back. Yep. Yeah, you know, um, but luckily those brown trout stay right, but <laughs> right where they need to be, and they eat, and they eat, and and they're fantastic. I mean, our average brown this summer was probably five to six pounds, somewhere in there. Lots of fish in that eight to ten pound class. And you were catching. So now again, if you're a lake guy, Lake Ontario, usually the brown trout fishing is great early in the spring. Yep. They're on the shoreline, they move out. People would usually lose them or lose interest in them. And, and it, historically, the Far East End, now you're out of the Big Salmon River, that wasn't necessarily, it could be good early spring, but once that spring shoreline bite ended on the Eastern Shore, really your brown trout fishing was done. You had to travel west for them. Yeah. You had browns east we did. all summer we long. We didn't travel anywhere. We did get them on the south shore. Yeah. When we first, after we left them alone in 10 feet of water and, and fished for a lake trout a little bit up north and found some early salmon actually in June. And we yep. them for like a week. When we did look for browns, it was back on the south shore. And we got them. We got them really good for a couple of days. And we thought, you know what? In the early spring, they were off the sand, up north of yeah. us. Yeah. From, from Sandy Pond south to the South Dune in that area, just a little bit like a like a couple miles north. So we thought, well, those fish probably didn't come all the way down in, into this corner. They could probably just slid out. Sure enough, they were still on sand. They were just in 60 feet of water instead of 10. Yeah. And yep. we stayed right there. And you guys had them for a long time. Weeks. Yeah. Yep. So, so that's that's Todd's season, and now. In our advanced years, we don't really fish the, <laughs> we don't fish October in the river anymore for oh. for for hire. Very rarely. It's it, that's a young man's game. I'm not gonna lie. That's, that's a that's a that's a young man's stressful. game. Yeah, very stressful. Yeah, it's a lot of people, but we're coming into that time. Not that there's still not a lot of people for November steelhead fishing, but it's de it's a different group of people, and we're gonna be back on the river a lot. Um, 
sooner than later, doing some cool stuff up there that you might not normally see. That's a preview. Let's talk about today. We left the dock at 6.30. It was 44 degree air temperature. We were in still, we're in the far west end. We're in the deep west end down here. And I've got 50.5 for surface temp. This, we've had the same east-southeast wind blowing now for eight days. It's got this whole end of the lake filled with, with bait and fish. And when I say fish, we had pickerel, walleye, smallmouth, and perch today. That's four species that we, and only really one we were trying for. We finally got on a swim bait bite. Hold that one for a second. Oh, you already took yours off. We got on a swim bait bite today, and my best one, I was throwing the Mega Bass Hazadong Shad. This is the 4.2, same one I was using yesterday. I started with it on my noodle rod, and I got beat badly four times. I just couldn't, between the stretch of the rod, the stretch of the straight eight pound on this, on this that I was running, eight pound monofilament too. I just, I'd fight them all the way to the boat. There wasn't enough meat in the rod to set the hook up. There wasn't enough backbone no. to, to bring it all the way through. No. And so the fourth time I got beat on a big smallie right at the side of the boat, I switched, same reel with the eight pound, but I switched to a, to a smaller, a seven foot medium action that I could reel all the way into them and then sweep set them. And that was really key. Now, you seem to be getting a little different bite because you were, my bites, they were coming up behind it and they go, and they suck it right in. And then it would just, you would just feel weight. You were getting more of a bite bite because you were snapping up on fish. Right. And your fish seemed to be biting closer. What I think it was, I was fishing a lot lighter. I was fishing a half ounce. So you were fishing a quarter. A quarter, a quarter. And I was trying to keep it down halfway and, in the water column. And that's a three eighths head. And yeah. I think I noticed for you to retrieve and keep the same depth, you had to go a lot faster. Yep. So my retrieve was much slower, and they seemed to hit it harder. Yeah. Harder. Because, it, and you'll see on the full length video, because this is going to be a great standalone video when we get it edited. A lot of Todd's bites were within the last 25 feet coming in, and it was boom like that. You know, mine were early on the drop. I'm assuming those fish were seeing that bait fluttering down to the bottom, grabbing it, because I'd start to come tight. And there'd be weight there, and I'd keep reeling, and the rod would go like this, and bend and bend and bend, and finally get tight and loaded, and then I'd come back on them. Um, so it was it was funny how different, even though we were fishing really the same. Yeah, same bait, slightly different size and slightly different color, but that shouldn't affect our horizontal presentations. Were coming yeah, in the water column at a little different depths and speed. Yeah, you're just going faster. And we were seeing scattered bait from surface all the way down in here, so. These bass, especially these bass today, are in this high sun, they're out cruising. Oh, yeah. And now you probably could catch them on 10 other presentations. I wish I'd thrown a spinnerbait. We didn't throw worked. a spinnerbait today and we could have. Yeah. That were, those would have been much more violent strikes. Sure. Um, I did throw the A-rig, it didn't work. Like I said, we went through a bunch of baits that didn't get bit, but we didn't stick with anything long. Either. No. Because we knew you knew early on that that swim bait was, was working. And I do love to throw a swim bait, especially in the fall, but anytime. But in the fall, it's a lot of fun. Um, and so I've already called down to Lakeside Outfitters. They have more because this was my last one. I had two left. They mangled the other one. This is my last one. I called, I called Lakeside from the boat. And I said, do you have this? He said, yes. I said, I'll be down to get it. So. We're heading back. I'm going to take Courtney to lunch. And then while she's out in the car, I'm going to go in and spend money <laughs> on tackle. <laughs> All right. So that's our day. We had a great day. A lot of fun. Yeah, that was. I'm so glad to be back fishing with you, buddy. It's Same nice. It's been, it's been a long three yeah, months. I know. Hiatus. So we're back, baby. And you're going to see a lot more of us together doing all kinds of stuff, not just the Night of Lakes. So stay tuned. Thanks, everybody everybody out there for your support it's been amazing and i love it and there's way more to go we got a long time before ice fishing season we got a long time and there's a lot of great open water fishing left to be had so if you were deer hunting this weekend i hope you killed the big one if you were fishing this weekend i hope you caught a big one
If you're bummed out from the Syracuse game yesterday, oh. which a lot of us are because they laid an absolute goose egg in the second half, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? that, but we can go fishing. We can go fishing. <laughs> and we can have great days. And on three, one, two, three, keep your tip up. Thank you. Get the ball.